Y'all, it's Troy. It's been a while. Haven't uploaded a video in a while. But, finally get trying to uh, get back on it. Got a little treat here. We have the new Shimano 9200 Durace Group, which is semi-wireless. Uh, here it is. We have it on a Basso. So, uh, biggest changes is the rear derailleur is now the charging port and the junction box. The rear derailleur, as you can see, is still wired up to the battery, which remains in the seat post. Front derailleur, smaller, uh, also wired. And you can kind of see that. Uh, and it's wired up to the battery, but the shifters are now wireless. So uh, they have a little different shape to them. Button up top here. Still have your regular two buttons. Lever, brake lever actuation is much different, much improved. Uh, it, the free stroke at the beginning here is a lot shorter. And as you can see, it doesn't close nearly as far. I have to press it really hard to get it to go there. So you can still have a finger in there without getting pinched if you're holding onto the hood. Um, but yes, yeah, so they're wireless and they have a coin cell battery in them. And that's kind of the biggest uh, changes. Uh, for gears, it's 12 speed, but uh, not much has changed, really. Uh, this is a 1130. We have an 1130. Um, and really all they've done is just added a gear in the middle. So now that goes 15, 16, 17, 18, rather than having that little jump. I think 17 or 18 was missing. Either way, uh, they're gonna have two cassettes, 1134, 1130, and then maybe next year they're coming out with an 1128. But uh, front chain rings, nothing really changed for most of us. This is a 5236. You can see the shape or the crank is a little bit different, but uh, overall, they're going to have a 5236, 5034. They're dropping the 5339 in exchange for a uh, 5440 for more of the Pro Tour, triathlon, that kind of thing. So I guess it was one of their least selling options, and all the crank, all the pros wanted something bigger, so they kind of just dropped it. We have it on the new Basso Diamante SV. It does have, uh, normally has a completely integrated brake and or if you have wires. But we got this new Pro handlebar, which doesn't match up perfectly. And the, the port out of that kind of made like a hard turn. So we ran it out of this port instead. Um, overall, User experience with the DI2, pretty much exactly the same. Uh, nothing really changed as far as user experience. But um, what has changed is the brakes, uh, the actuation. It's got this, I think they're calling it servo wave. Um, they did it on the mountain bike. They did it on the DI2 GRX. It feels much better. Um, so... I really like the feel of the brakes now, the older uh, 9100 Grupo. The brakes were good, but I would pinch my fingers just by the way I hold the bars. And these, I don't do it. Um, they also have new wheels. These are Durace wheels. Uh, C50, uh, new internal width, so they're much wider. They're tubeless, they're hooked, so you can run a non-tubeless or a tubeless tire. Um, these are currently tubed. Um, just because we've been switching wheels out and all kinds of stuff. It was just a little bit easier during the testing. Only one cage length. I will mention that on the derailleur. So there's only going to be one one cage length, which, you know, looks longer than uh, what most probably had on their road cassettes. Um, they're sharing the disc brake rotors from the mountain bike. This is a 140 in the rear, 160. I would probably prefer... 160 all around um, But haven't had any problems there you can kind of see from the outside 
so no more road specific uh, rotors um, the chain is also the same as the uh, 12 speed mountain bike um, so that's kind of cool makes it a little easier to find parts you don't have shops with a thousand things um, but overall shifting experience user experience exactly the same if your bike's been sitting a while there's a little delay uh, when you hit the first shift um, for it to all connect up but other than that I mean it shifts really quickly uh, probably the more interesting news is that um, the 12 speed cassettes uh, have a new kind of uh, engagement onto the free hub so there is a 12 speed free hub but it's backwards compatible with 11 speed free hub so if you have a 11 speed wheel um, you can use the new 12 speed um, but if you have a 12 speed wheel you can't use 11 speed so um, the durace wheels that are coming out these um, are going to come in three depths and uh, through a c50 c36 and a c60 or 65 i believe um but they will be 12 speed only the altegra versions of those wheels will be 11 or 12 speed um, is what we're told and yes they're launching altegra 12 speed di2 at the same time um probably the last note which i know a lot of people are kind of back and forth on but there will be currently shimano says they are not working on any cable actuated so di2 only um, they do have a 12 speed rim brake but it's nothing new they're just taking the uh, 11 speed shifters and making some modifications some software updates internally you can't do that yourself um, they have a little bit you know different look to them but uh they're not planning on selling very many of them uh and the, the big change that they have to make to that shifter is because of that di2 the new di2 wire is a 1.3 mil which is what they've been running on like the e-bike systems and stuff for a while instead of the 1.8 so they had to just put some new controllers in there to adapt to that but other than that the rim brake um it'll have 12 gears uh, it'll be a DI2, but the shifters um, are the same. They didn't put any new technology into the rim brake system or calipers or any of that stuff. So um, really, that's a that's kind of a, a flat change. You know, if you want the 12th gear, go for it. But if you've got rim brakes, I'd just stick with what you've got. Um, but on the disc brake side, you know, Shimano's pushing that that's the future, uh, which you know i think it is and um they've obviously upgraded the brakes so i uh we don't have a computer mount on the bar but i have i have a computer in my pocket here my trusty wahoo and here let's see if we can do this all at, at once but uh let's see if we can set it up here the buttons i have programmed at the top uh oh okay there we go okay so the buttons at the top programmed so when you hit it it should change the screen there you go okay so um haven't been riding too long today gonna do kind of a bigger loop but we've been i've been riding it for about a month now um it's it's pretty sweet i mean uh, the disc brakes um, and the actuation I think make it worth it the cassette range is, is nice um, but as a user experience if you've liked DI2 then you're gonna like this um, if there was something about DI2 you didn't like you'll obviously have to analyze that but overall the user experience is very similar uh, I've been riding it around really no one's <laughs> noticed because it looks very very similar There's the slight details on the crank the brake levers look a little bit different But you know when everything's moving no one no one has really noticed too much uh, Most people just notice the rotors because they're like oh you're running the mountain bike rotors, you know um, other than that um, it's it's very in line and you know, Shimano just thinks that the 
uh, user experience was already good um, and they just wanted to improve on a few little things that they had feedback on so I think they've done a pretty great job Uh, side note, there will be a power meter. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the power meter they currently have. Um, it'll have a new charging port that matches the charging port for the DI2. Um, so you can use one cord to charge both. But um, similar to the old one, the cord's actually shorter. I think the cord's like five feet. So uh, at my house, I had to kind of you know, use a little extension cord and stuff, which is a little annoying. Um, I do like that on the SRAM side of things, I can just pop them off, put them up on the counter, and grab them on my way out. Um, but, as we all know, the Shimano battery does last a lot longer, so you don't have to do it as often. Um, but the power meter, they said, will be getting uh, a software update. They said in the next year, I'm hoping they're mean within this year which is uh 2021 but we'll see um they had purchased uh some technology from pioneer not the hardware side but the technology side and it sounds like they are working to implement some of that okay i'm gonna get on the road uh i'll put in some footage of me riding around um but overall yeah the it's it's good but if you were looking for a huge change, it's not a huge change. The wireless, I mean, it doesn't change the experience. It, I mean, unless you're building your bike and disassembling it all the time, maybe. But you still have brake hoses, so um, you'll still have to run those. But overall, it works really well. Shifting is quick because it's in the same distance. Shimano says it's, you know, 30 or 40% faster. Um, because the derailleur just doesn't have to move as far to go to that next gear. But uh, as a real world using it, I don't see any difference. It was already really fast, so it still remains really fast. Um, and front shifting, as Shimano's known for, is pretty spot on. So um, get on the road, have a little fun. This is the snake off of Mulholland. I don't know if you can see probably up there, but it's closed and it's been closed for a while. There's a big washout at the bottom there and uh, there's no cars on it. So it's quite nice to ride your bike on. Um, and further over, Mulholland from PCH is also closed to cars. So there's still, you know, residential traffic, a lot more on that one. But um, just going to cruise around and hit a few closed roads and... Uh, try to beat the heat because it's supposed to be uh, over 100 degrees today Okay, a couple things I left out uh, Shimano sees this it's road paved road specific so rear derailleur has no additional tension or uh, Clutch or anything. It's just like the old one uh, they also think that I also think that um, the larger pulley wheels, while in certain situations, can be beneficial. Overall, it lowers the efficiency of the drivetrain as far as shifting, user experience, uh, some of those key things. So, well, obviously, the large pulley manufacturers will tell you otherwise. Shimano pretty much said, look, we make large pulley wheels. It's at no added difficulty for us to do so. But realistically, they don't think it's worth, it's worth any losses in shifting performance. So uh, they also mentioned that, okay, I don't know if you can hear me, but that if you switch out to a larger pulley system made by some other brand, you are uh, voiding your warranty. So that's something to think about. So, you know, if you choose to go with a bigger pulley wheel, be 
choose to go with a bigger pulley wheel, you could be, you will be voiding your uh, manufacturer warranty. Um, yeah, okay. We're gonna be going downhill here. Probably won't be able to hear me. But it's a pretty fun road. But it's usually the good brake test.
bang with the 24 mil spindle. So, no BB30, 386 Evo, none of the over, the larger spindles for the crank. Still using the 24 mil, 24 mil spindle, which I prefer. Um, I like it, makes it easier to fit older bikes and newer bikes. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, the disc calipers are on Durace, are one piece, Altegra, two piece. They have a new bleed port, which if you uh, bleed your own brakes or maintenance your uh, own brakes, uh, which you don't really have to do that often, you're supposed to, but I mean, no one, I don't very often. And um, so it's much easier to do that. So that's a, another plus. But overall, it, it really is just like user experience is the same when you're riding your bike with improved, with improved braking. Uh, on the disc brake platform. So, but like I said earlier, if you're on rim brakes, it's not, it's, to me, it's really not worth uh, the upgrade. I mean, if you're gonna go out and buy a Grupo anyways for a rim brake bike, maybe, I guess, because the part shortage it's got all the prices uh, pretty high, but you know, you have to weigh your options. But realistically, from Shimano's point of, point of view, SRAM's point of view, uh, you know, they're really not moving forward with new, you know, performance oriented components for rim brakes. So, yeah, I posted something about that on the web. And it's got a bunch of people upset at me, but it's not me saying that I don't like rim brakes. It's just like any old car or uh, anything that gets upgraded, you know, they can't make the parts forever. So, uh, you just, have to get what you can get that fits. So, overall, you know, while you might have a perfectly good rim brake bike, and I'm sure a lot of people do, uh, you know, there's not, you know, the future of high-end components for it are just whatever is pre-existing, nothing, Nothing new. So um, keep that keep that in mind. Uh oh, I missed the I missed the ramp. Ooh, that's a big step. One last thing on the crank. Probably just cut this and drop it in, but on the crank. They're offering more crank arm lengths, meaning I think they said 160, 165, 170, and then just continue up, but just more shorter crank arm lengths. I guess that's something that they've been getting asked about and the shorter crank arms are becoming more popular, so. Looks like there might be a fire starting someplace. Just had two fire trucks pass on Canaan. And there's the helicopter. Fire truck helicopter. Let's see if we can ride this here. Oh yeah. <sighs>
Okay. Well, it's fun.